Hello, yeah, how do you do? My name is Danielle Stickman. I am Dina Inna in Koyakon Athabaskan from Nandalton, which is located in Bristol Bay, Alaska. I am currently one of the um, Alaska Native Artists in Residence at the Sheldon Jackson Museum, one of several that will be coming throughout the summer, and we're located in Sitka, Alaska. I'd like to say a big chin on thank you to the National Endowment for Arts for funding this residency program. I really enjoyed my time here and I've learned a lot from the collections and I've just really appreciated this opportunity. I, uh, I'm a beater. I've beaded since I was 16 um, and I've just started working with fish skins and in the last three years and I also draw and just being able to see the techniques, the stitch work and the fish skin products in the museum has been wonderful. And so today I am going to show how to make a dream catcher, which is about less than three inches wide. Um, it's got three colors, but the one that I'm going to show you has four and it's about 10 inches long. And this particular design, it has, it goes in a cyclical pattern. And for me, this represents uh, the cycle of birth, life, death, and rebirth. And it's just a beautiful design once it comes out. And I um, have learned how to bead and, and knit from my grandmothers. So my grandmother on my dad's side was a really big beater and my grandmother on my mother's side was a big knitter and they always reminded us the importance of um, sitting still and being able to focus on one project. So I've, I've really enjoyed the time here and really focusing on my art. Um, and also when, when you're gathering your materials to make your dream catcher, think of uh, what you're, you'd like to represent. This one, these are happy colors. They. Uh, I usually name each item that I make. I haven't named this one, but it's, this one just reminds me of the sun or a Shawnee, which means summer. And so as you're collecting your beads, just think of what you'd like to represent in, uh, in your project. So I'm just going to show you the materials you'll need. So I already made the salmon center. And you don't have to put salmon skin in the center if you don't want to. A nice uh, stone would be nice to just put in the center as well. Um, but if you do have salmon skin, salmon leather, this is about the size of a penny. I just traced a penny and then sewed this together with the beads that I'll be using. And so the beads that I'll be using are size 11. Uh, seed beads in size 11 are uh, alter um, in some cases. So this, these are all size 11, but some of them are smaller and bigger. So just um, as you're creating your dream catcher, you'll realize that the sizes are slightly different. And so I have Nymo thread and um, ribbon, which will go on the outside and that keeps the outside beads in place. I have scissors in case I need to re-thread my needle. I have extra beads and I also have accent beads and bugles. So the, the fun part about making dream catchers is you could put as many accent beads as you'd like into the finished product. Um, and so I'm gonna just, pardon my rotation, put this on the stand. All right, so I've already got my thread tied onto the hoop. I just knotted it right there and I put on a gold. The first bead will be the next, the color at the end. So say that um, the last one will be peach, the last one will be gold. So you put one gold or one peach on there and then you put 14 of the next color. So I put, I already counted 14 of the pink, the darker pink, so a total of 15 beads on there. I've already threaded my needle, and the length of this, um, this thread is about um, two and a half yards, 
and the, this thread will only be enough for the center. I've realized over the years that the more thread you have, the more tangles you get and the more you'll have to cut off. So start off with a shorter amount of thread just, just to do the center. So you've got your 15 beads on, you wrap the thread around, pull the needle through the center. You can pull the thread all the way around and you're still holding onto those beads. So you've got the beads right there, 15 beads, you go through the last one. So you go through that last bead, pull the needle through, and you've got somewhat of a hoop, right? You've got a loop right there of the dark pink. And then the next color will be light pink, so you do 14 beads of the next color, the 14 beads right there, bring the thread all the way through, and bring the needle through the bottom, and then go down that last bead. Oop. There you go. Down the last bead, pull the needle through, thread all the way through, and then now you've got two little loops. We're, going, we're working from the outside in and you just continue this process with 14 until you have them all the way around. So the next color will be white. white, and you loop that through, the thread is on the outside, bring the needle through and go down that last bead. In this one you'll have three color or three rounds of the four colors, so there will be a total of 12 loops all the way around. This one has 12 as well, but with three colors, it goes around four times. All right, so continue that process with 14 beads in the pattern that you want. And we'll, on the next video, we'll go into the next row.